Hey guys, Sarah, Thrifting for the Nest. Hope you guys are doing good today. Today is a snow day for us here in the Pacific Northwest, and it is a lot of snow. I'm looking outside right now, and I, I'm i sure I've seen this much snow at home before, but it's been a long time, and it's super rare. So my kids are home from school, which is, which is great. I'm totally going to make the most of it, and I think if it wasn't on the heels of all of the snow days we've had and... Um, Christmas break, it would be um, more exciting. So, but we are going to go out and play in this stuff because there's probably a good like six inches at my house right now. So it's insane. Um, so I'm stuck indoors and luckily I have enough stuff to list because uh, I don't know when this is going to let up. They're saying it's going to thaw out this weekend and then it's going to snow again. So <laughs> I just we're just not used to that we usually get one or two minor snow events a year and that's it so um we're gonna have to figure out how to get around in this stuff luckily i'm stocked up groceries wise and i've got plenty of inventory to list um i've got a big box of bras i can break into if i need to um but that said my uh, sister comes and helps take pictures for me and she will not be able to be here so i'm a one woman show uh, and taking care of my kiddos my husband is home today which is great but he is working from home um so he'll be available but not completely so um it'll be an interesting day. So I have, um, I sold 14 items yesterday. So I have 14 items to ship. So I figured I'd do a quick what uh, sold video. You know, honestly, the stuff isn't like super big dollars, but it just, it really adds up. I was looking at my overview, um, on my eBay homepage and I've been consistently listing the last few days and my sales have been super consistent. So starting with, um, Saturday, I did 250, 253 Sunday. I did 302 uh, Monday I did 246 and Tuesday I did 240 in sales and today I've already got $60 in orders. So I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, my sales are down from last month overall by 20%, um, but it'll pick up, you know, like I said, I took some time off around the holidays uh, from listing and so things tanked a little bit, you know, and, and, you know, things just generally don't sell quite as much around the actual holidays. So January is typically a really good month for me. So I think I'm off to a pretty good start. So that said, let's, um, let's get started. And because I'm going to do a what sold video, I'm not going to like ship as I go, but I'm going to tell you how I'm going to ship. I've had quite a few questions um, from some friends who are looking to start an eBay business about shipping. It seems to be that that is the most intimidating thing for a lot of new sellers is how to ship. So I'll tell you this right away. I think shipping is super easy. eBay makes it really easy for us. I ship everything through eBay. I print all my labels through eBay. Uh, because I'm a top rated seller, I get a small percentage of a discount for uh, shipping through eBay and the tracking is automatically uploaded for my customers. So it makes my life very easy because I'm not having to go in and manually enter all the tracking information for my buyers. So I do all of my shipping from eBay. And it's a simple formula, basically, of how I decide to ship. I do ship everything through USPS. It's the easiest for me. I schedule pickups. So my mailman comes and knocks on my door and picks up all my packages from me every day. That's amazing. Um, we have a really good relationship, and he knows what to expect from me. So um, I'm very thankful for him. He keeps my business running, for sure. And so it literally takes no extra effort. From me. For the first couple years of my business, I did run to the post office and just drop everything off in the box every day. And that was pretty easy too. It was usually on my way to some place. So no big deal. Now I'm shipping well over 10 packages a day most of the time. So I will jam up those drop boxes if I try to do it that way now. So I'm thankful for the relationship that I have with my postal worker. He makes my life so much easier and he is joyful about his job and does not complain. He gives me a hard time when I get over 50 packages that he has to scan a day, but, um, but you know, he's growing with me, so that's good. So anyways, so as I go with my 14 items to ship, I don't know if I said 15 or 14, my, my sales are showing 15 items to ship, but one of them, I have a buyer who's asked me to delay their package for a couple weeks because they're going to be out of town. So I actually only have 14 items to ship today. And, um, so as I go through each one, I'll tell you how I'm shipping it and my reasoning for it. I do have a shipping scale. I do recommend that everybody who is going to start selling on eBay get a shipping scale right away. You don't want to guess. I can I can guess pretty well now, but it's because I've got, you know, almost five years of just knowing approximately how much an item weighs. 
Um, but once you get up to that one pound mark, you really need to know the difference between 15.5 ounces and one pound three ounces because it makes a difference in your shipping. So the first thing that I sold, let me get over to my um, dollars page here so I can tell you how much they sold for. I got these at the bins. They're little um, kids Crocs boots. So these le weigh less than a pound. So although by the time I throw a box in there, it, they're probably going to be a little more than a pound. Um, and I am offering free shipping. So I know that I bought these for less than a dollar. Yeah, they're 13 ounces. Yeah, I can ship these for first class. I'll be able to get this under a pound. So that's my rationale. If it's under a pound, I'm going to ship USPS first class because everything under 16 ounces can go first class. So that's going to cost me less than $4 to ship. So still, I mean, that's still a $10 profit on these Crocs, which makes me happy. Um, I sold these yesterday. I put them up yesterday and sold them right away. They're Nike joggers. These are really popular pants right now. Um, I will pick these up. Uh, they're the tapered leg ones, which are more popular than the wide leg um, pants. So Nike, I sold them. I took a best offer for $25. I put them up for $30 knowing that I would probably get a $25 best offer. I did haggle a little bit with this buyer, um, but I knew I could get $25 for them. Um, I bought these at the bins, so I'm going to estimate about a pound. Yep, they're right at 16 ounces, so they're going to go um, a USPS padded flat rate. So I stock up on those uh, padded flat rate mailers. You can get them off of the USPS website. You cannot get them at the post office. A lot of their uh, flat rate mailers you can get at the post office, but not the padded ones. But the padded ones are perfect because they have give and you can shove stuff in. And I usually tape the seam closed um, because I can pack stuff pretty tight in there. Jeans, uh, sweaters, uh, even coats can go in there. Basically, whatever I can pack in there, I will. And I'm not worried about it being overstuffed. I'm not. If I, if I really feel like the items in jeopardy, I'll switch over to a different kind of mailer, but I've even been known to write like, please use caution when opening with scissors. So my buyers know not to, you know, that they could cut into the material. It's common sense, but sometimes, um, I could see where somebody might get a little frustrated about that. So, um, but you know what, if it saves four or $5 on shipping, it's the way to go. So I'm going to ship these, um, via padded flat rate mailer. So still made like 18, $19 on these. All right. I've had these on my, see it's winter. Like it's snowing here, it's snowing everywhere. I have sold some kids Sorel boots. These have been on my shelf for a while. Um, the buyer paid $16 for these. They were on, on sale for 16 plus shipping. So they paid a total of $23 for these. Um, they must be close because that's not a whole lot for shipping considering the weight. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's a good profit. I got these at the bins for maybe two bucks and they're getting a good deal getting Sorel boots for $23. Okay. So these, I put these up yesterday and right away I got like four offers right off the bat for these. So I, I knew, I knew I could go up a little bit cause they were pretty low ball offers. They're these Adidas, they're the Supernova men's shorts with the lining in them. Got these at the bins and I sold them for 15. They weighed like nothing, like three ounces. So that is a good deal. And I'm going to ship those first class. So basically most of the time it's the question is going to be, do these go USPS first class or do they go padded flat rate? Um, I do have some items that aren't going to be able to fit into a padded flat rate. This item actually may not. So I'm going to have to do the best thing possible here. It's a Burton ski jacket, but it's a kid's ski jacket. I might be able to squish this into a padded flat rate, but it's pretty bulky. So um, if not, I'll just open up this real quick if you have patience for me and my com computer to open. So this is where I have to make the decision. I, I calculated it as um, shipping with a padded flat rate, but they are in Washington. So here's the thing. Um, it's $5.90 for me to ship these padded flat rate. But if I cannot ship them in a padded flat rate, my next choice is either priority mail or a medium flat rate box. A priority mail package to Washington, because I'm in Oregon, is going to cost me $5.83. So it's actually going to be cheaper than a padded flat rate. And I'm not going to have to like get my workout in trying to shove this into a padded flat rate. So um, that's when you just have to compare. When you go to the shipping page, there's a drop down menu that tells you your options to ship, and then you can compare pricing based on the buyer's location. If they were in New York and I could not get these into a padded flat rate mailer, 
it may be more cost efficient based on weight to ship these in a medium flat rate box, which is around $11 for me, um, which wouldn't leave me with that much profit because the buyer paid $20 for this jacket. So, which is actually a really good deal for a Burton girl's coat. I must've had this one on sale. Anyway, but I'll, I'm still happy with that profit margin. I'm even happier that they're in Washington and it won't cost me that much to ship. So those are the questions you're gonna wanna ask um, when you go to ship an item. But the beautiful thing is that you have all of your options right in front of you. So eBay completely takes the guesswork out of it. You just have to trust in the eBay shipping process and ship through eBay, print your labels through eBay. So it's easier than it seems. I know it seems intimidating, but between eBay doing all the, the calculating for you, you being able to print your labels at home, and then you have the option to either just go drop off your prepaid uh, packages at the post office or have a mail carrier come and pick them up from you. You, It's good. It doesn't, you're not having to wait in line at the post office for, you know, a half an hour or whatever. It's not as intimidating as it seems once you get started it's actually to me one of the easiest parts of my job so um okay next item let me get out of this shipping page real quick this is a new thing ebay started doing they used to not show the pictures of the items on your shipping page they just had the descriptions and i love so much that they started putting the thumbnail photo it makes my life so much easier um, okay, so this has been sitting on my shelf forever. It's my, like, desire to sell vintage clothing. I bought this probably over a year ago. It's probably been sitting in my store for over a year, and I just could not bring myself to get rid of it because I love it so much. Look at that cute vintage tag. I love vintage, and I want to figure it out. I need to watch more of Hazel Hart's vintage um, YouTube channel because she knows what she's looking for, and... Um, she can help me figure out what's worth buying and what's not. So it's so it's just adorable. So this is less than a pound, so it's gonna go first class. I sold it for $13. I got it at the bins for, you know, probably 50, 60 cents. Okay, this item, it's a J. Crew sweater. It's like a wool knit, wool blend, J. Crew cable knit sweater. Size small, so not a very desirable size. I took a $13 best offer yesterday because this has been, I think I've relisted this item at least three times. So by that point, you just kind of want to move it. So it's going to ship first class because it's less than a pound. Maybe cost me three bucks to ship it. Okay, so I bought this at the bins. And I looked the brand up. It's a robe, new with tags. And this this brand, take a look at this brand, Alexander Del Rosa, Rosa. It's missing its belt though. But because it was at the bins and because it was new with tags and the comps looked great, like brand new, this robe is selling for $50, $60 on eBay. Um, I decided to buy it. I figured it really, I wasn't risking too much. So I sold it um, for $22.74 on sale, but without a belt. I think that's a gr great deal. It's actually probably more than I thought I was going to get. Free shipping. I think this will probably have to go in a padded flat rate mailer, uh, but still a really good profit. When I first started eBay, anything Nike Livestrong was huge. So anything with the Lance Armstrong Livestrong logo was big. So I'm still drawn to it. It does not sell as well as it used to, but I still decided to buy this t-shirt because it had the bike on it, the bike graphic on it. So I took a $12 best offer yesterday, which is great for a t-shirt that weighs four ounces and that I paid 40 cents for. So I am happy with that. Again, it'll go flat rate. All, most of the stuff's from the bins. This is the only item that, that I did not get at the bins. And this was kind of a bummer. This was, I wouldn't call it a fail, but it sat on my shelf way too long. It's Pendleton, and it's a nice Pendleton. I mean, it's like wool, awesome pattern, stripes. It's a great um, piece, but it's a size small. And I bought it for $15. I paid up for it over a year ago at the Goodwill retail store. Um, but I thought, oh my goodness, it's this perfect Pendleton with no holes. Um, it's the Portland collection, which is a good piece. You know, I think that if this was a size large or extra large, it probably would have sold really fast for $70. But it sat on my floor, in my store for a long time. And I took an offer for $30 yesterday. So I paid $15. I've relisted it multiple times um, over the last year. 
and I have to pay to ship it. So honestly, I, I made a few bucks. I didn't lose money on it, but I was really hoping to make more. But by yet, by the time I got that offer yesterday, I was like, yeah, let's just, I just need to move it out. So free up my money to buy more inventory. And that'll go padded flat rate as well. Okay. I bought this item because, because of vintage and I got it at the bins. It's a vintage men's shirt, but it's kind of that rockabilly style. I don't even know if that's really the term, but it even still has like the cardboard piece underneath the collar. It's this brand, which isn't much of anything, but I sold this piece and I had it in my store probably for a couple months. I think I relisted it once or twice. Um, I sold it for $15. So again, got it at the bins for maybe 50 cents, if that, and I'll sell and I'll um, ship it for maybe $3. Uh, it's pretty light. Um, so by the time I paid fees, still an eight or nine dollar profit. And all of these little profits add up and, and I get the big items every now and then too, which just bulks up my store. So, I mean, I still had a two, what did I say? A $240 day yesterday. I'm really happy with that. That's about my goal. It used to be if I could just break a hundred, um, you know, I'm not pulling numbers like some other resellers are, but I'm okay with that because I don't necessarily list quite as much as they did. I did get 45 items up yesterday, which I'm embarrassed to admit that my goal was 50 and I stopped at 45, but I was done. Um, I probably, I would have gotten more if I had uh, more pictures taken, but I had to stop and take pictures for two hours. And then when my kids got home, it just was kind of tough for me to get back in front of my computer. So um, anyway, that's, you know, I said my goal is 30 items a day and I did 45 yesterday. So I'm pretty happy with that. I, I knew I wouldn't hit 100. A lot of resellers were doing $100 or $100, a hundred listing challenge. And I just knew I didn't have the hours of my day to do that. But, um, but I am really, really working on getting my listing speed up. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, these have been up for a while just because it's not uh, summer. I told you about Tempo Shorts selling for really well. I, these sold for 13 for these Nike running shorts. Um, got them for, at the bins for less than a dollar. Um, same story. I'll ship them for three bucks or so. And then I've got my last item. Oh, no, I've got two more items. Sorry. Um, a bra. So it's a lace walk hole. I will show you more of this tap. Or sorry, it's a Chantel bra. I don't think I mentioned this brand the other day when I talked about bras. So I will buy Chantel bras if they are in good condition. They do sell really well. Um, sold this for $13, but literally cost me like 10 cents. Cost me $3 to ship, if that. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and lastly, this Lucky brand. Top. It's just a basic knit top. And I took a best offer this morning for $14 on that. So, all right, that is that. So I decided yesterday to pay close attention to my listing speed. Um, so I actually calculated how long it takes me to list an item. And then from that point, how long it takes me to list 10 items or how many items I can list in an hour. What started this is a lot of the reselling community on Instagram was talking about doing a 100 item listing challenge. And I honestly just didn't think that I could do that. Like I said earlier, I felt like that was just too much for me. So, but wanted, wanted to see realistically how many I could list in a given period of time. Um, but I am easily distracted. I did not think that I was. But when I stopped to think about it, I realized that all of the notifications on my phone, whether it's an eBay sale or an Instagram notification or a Facebook notification, oftentimes I would stop and look at those or respond to those things. Or if um, I had a, an idea or something came across my mind like, oh, I need to call and make an appointment for something, I would stop listing and call and make that appointment and then I would probably get distracted by doing something else. So. I decided to take just a dedicated period of time without distractions. So I had a pad of paper in front of me. So if any distracting thoughts, like I need to make a phone call to make an appointment or something like that, something I needed to do, I would just jot it down real quick. So I knew I would not forget to do that thing if it was important, but after I was done listing. And then every time my phone rang or um, made like not rang like a phone call, but if somebody texted me that wasn't my husband, or um, 
if I got any kind of notification from eBay or Facebook, I just ignored it. So doing that, I was able to get 12 items listed an hour. So that's after photographs were taken. I, I had photographs taken already from the day before. So that was just creating a listing start to finish. So that is currently my listing speed. I did create some drafts recently, uh, or not drafts, but um, templates to go off of. And I'm not sure if that actually helps increase my listing speed or not, because a lot of the information I have to put in anyways. What I did do to increase my listing speed though, is I noticed as my photographs were loading, I could go in and put in all my item specifics. And by the time that I put in all my item specifics, my photographs would be finished loading and then I could go in and adjust and crop or rotate as necessary. So that gave me a, an idea um, or that gave me the speed that I needed to get those listings done faster. There were a couple of listings that took a little bit longer and if that's, uh, if I needed to do a little bit of extra Google research, but my total average time it took me um, in an hour was 12 listings per hour. So I'm pretty happy with that. I would like to get a little bit faster than that, but um, I know there's a lot of questions like, how do you list so many things? And what started that is the day before I sat down for an hour and a half to list and I only got eight items listed in an hour and a half. That's not good enough, honestly. I was super distracted by my phone, by my ideas. And that was frustrating for me because I had given myself an hour and a half to get listings done and I only had completed eight. So um, now that I know what my Achilles heel is with those social media distractions and just random thoughts that pop into my head of things I need to complete, I think that when I set down to do my listings, that if I keep that in mind, then I can be faster and more efficient. So um just wanted to touch on that as well. And then I realized a little bit earlier um, when I was talking about shipping, I didn't mention um, what I ship in when it's first class. So because I ship clothing mainly, I use poly mailers. I get them from a vendor on eBay and I, um, I buy them in like three different sizes and that works for me. So all of my priority shipping supplies from USPS are free on the USPS website, and then I do buy the poly mailers to ship in. And, and of course, some of those poly mailers come from eBay with my, um, my credit that I get with my eBay store subscription. So, and then I have my shipping tape that I use to um, seal my packages if, I need, if they need a little extra security. And I use tissue paper from Costco, just like the gift wrap tissue, tissue paper. I use that to wrap up my garments before I put them in the poly mailers. I've done the plastic bags before. I think I just have some cruddy plastic bags. I don't like them very much, but I've seen some of the ones that other sellers are using and, and I like them a lot. So I might switch over to the plastic bag idea, like the clear plastic bag before you put them in the poly mailer. Um, but for now, the tissue paper thing seems to work well and I get lots of compliments on um, how well my items are packaged. So that doesn't seem to be a problem. I do put when I'm going to mail shoes in a padded flat rate, if they're like flats or like sneakers, I will put in my listings just so my buyers know that I ship all my shoes in padded flat rate mailers. And then they have the opportunity to upgrade shipping if they prefer to not have their stuff shipped in a padded flat rate. I've never had a complaint though about that. So um, just wanted to make mention of that. And then when I do package my items, I have a lint roller nearby. So I make sure everything is cleaned up. Uh, I do have pets. So there are always stray hairs on my garments, even though I keep my animals away from my clothing after I list it. Um, it just, it happens with a dog and a cat, it happens. So I do have plenty of lint rollers and I make sure that my stuff is all cleaned up. Uh, lint rolled and fresh before I put it in its package. So I think that should cover it as far as details on shipping and details on listing. Um, I got a message from my mail carrier today after I did shipping and because of all the snow we don't have um, postal carriers running today. They basically got sent home. They they showed up when they could and my mail carrier said he showed up to the depot and they sent him home and said we can't get the trucks out of the Portland uh, facility where all the mail is so you are off work. So 
mail is not running today. So I sent each one of my 14 buyers a message today explaining the situation. I did print all their um, shipping labels, that way it was completed and they got a notification with a tracking number, but let them know that I would get their packages out as soon as mail was running again. I've gotten lots of positive responses so far from those buyers. Nobody has complained, nobody has said anything negative yet. Um, about it or expressed any frustration. They've all uh, been very understanding and gracious for the communication. So communication with your customers is key. If something's not going to go as you expect it to go, that communication is super important. I could have just printed the shipping label out and hope they didn't notice that it didn't get a scan, but I just didn't want to take that risk. I feel like it was worth the extra 10 minutes I took today to message those buyers and let them know what was going on. Hopefully our mail's going to be running tomorrow they are saying that the stuff's sticking around. It's not going to melt until Sunday. And today's Wednesday. That's, I don't even want to think about that, honestly. So, um, however, good note is my kids are having a blast uh, playing in the snow. They're taking a little bit of a break right now. Um, but this is the kind of snow that's super fun to play in. So we are having a blast out there in it, building snow forts with the neighbors. And a couple of our neighbor's trees went down earlier today. So my husband was out there helping uh, get branches cut off and, and drug away from the houses. So that was an adventure this morning as well. So we're just going to make the most of it. Uh, I haven't got much listed today. It's one o'clock now. So that's going to be my focus for the rest of my time. Uh, while the kids are out playing, um, I have a great view here uh, of where my boys will play with the neighbors so I can talk to them and see them through the window. They're not out there now, but um, I like my uh, location of my office and my house so I can do that. And then we have our backyard, which we might send them out to play in out there. So um, anyways, enjoy the day. Enjoy uh, the snow or the sun or the rain or whatever Mother Nature might be bringing you today. And I will see you guys later. Have a good one.